Batman is a complex superhero, and his long and dark journey has been explored in so many different ways. But at the core of Batman is that symbiotic struggle with the Joker, and in Batman Arkham Origins, they get to start that very dance. Tell me something, dear. Have you ever had a really bad day? No. There's nothing so cruel as memory. The game is over, Joker. <laughs> Inescapable, unrelenting. Why do you do what you do? This will be the fight of your life. Because I made a promise. Now this is what I call a party. How many lives did you just take? I'm the one who's trying to kill you! <laughs> you can't even escape into madness! It's Christmas Eve and the villain Black Mask has hired eight assassins to try and kill the Batman. Facing off against baddies like Deathstroke, Killer Croc and a now female Copperhead gives us and Batman a chance to get to know some of these great villains a little bit more. And I think it's safe to say Bats is in for a long night. Origins is a prequel. Batman has only been on the job for two years. He's undisciplined, angry, unforgiving and unwilling to compromise. I want to see what 250 beats per minute feels like. I've never seen Batman this violent before, Hex, and it was kind of confronting. And also he's always surrounded by the death of innocence and that seems to fuel his rage. We recently spoke to Eric Holmes, creative director on the game, and he spoke about why they chose to go with a younger Batman. Getting into the prequel territory was something that really excited us because what we could do is, rather than telling another story of Batman, we could tell a transformative story for him, something where he really has to undergo a significant change, he really has to, to face a very significant enemy. Whilst it's very familiar, whilst the setting is familiar and the characters are somewhat familiar, we can refresh everyone through going through that prequel lens because uh, the press have never had a picture of him. And the people that do know that he's real really very much regret encountering him because the day that he met them, that day wasn't a good day for them. Batman has not yet become the character that we know he will, but through the events of the story, he grows and he develops and he starts becoming that character. You're outmatched by these assassins. I'm what? You're not some hardened vigilante. You're a young man with a trust fund and too much anger. This really is Gotham City at its worst, and Bats is just trying to hold it all together. The police cannot be trusted. They're just as corrupt as the criminals. You really do feel like a lone wolf most of this game, even when you're talking to Batman's most trusted friend, Alfred the Butler. Alfred, who do you see when you look at me? The boy whose shoes you used to tie every morning? The teenager you drove to his first date? You know, I feel like there's a lot that could have gone wrong with this game. And the first hour is very much more of the same and a little underwhelming, so I was worried. You know, it's just, it's got big shoes to fill. Yeah, and on top of that, there's new voice actors for Batman and for the Joker, and I was very worried about that. I think he's talking to you. But Troy Baker, who you might know as Joel from The Last of Us, or Booker DeWitt from Bioshock Infinite, does a stellar Joker. You really don't want to know. It's both an homage to Mark Hamill's long-running interpretation, but with Baker's own spin on it. I've killed a lot of people. <laughs> And as much as I miss not having the master Kevin Conroy, who's voiced Batman in the last two games and about a billion other things, I gotta say, Roger Craig Smith nailed it. And after a while, I completely forgot that it was a whole new Batman. Your boss, where's he going? Yeah, all my worries were cast aside. Once I'd got through that opening section and settled into the bat groove, the game really starts to find its feet. Origin City is twice the size of Arkham City, with a bridge connecting North and South Gotham. Buildings are much taller, but it still somehow feels very similar to the tightly knit Arkham City. I did enjoy stopping the odd crime, though, and there's plenty of puzzles and side missions. Another day, another door. I'm just no match for you. Gotham just felt a bit empty to me, though. I mean, I know it's Christmas Eve and everyone's meant to be home tucked up in bed, but I don't know, I just, I was a little bit disappointed. Yeah, I was excited to be in Gotham City finally, but it's not the Gotham City I've dreamed about exploring. It's very much a hub world between objectives. You do spend most of your time indoors though, and those missions more than make up for it, I think. You're pulled through at a solid pace through the 13 or so hour campaign, with a perfect drip feed of gadgets and abilities to complement the growing complexity of the environmental puzzles. The core gameplay hasn't changed a great deal on the surface, but it feels a lot more refined. 
Batman's counters are as sophisticated as ever, and it's such a joy watching him flip about seamlessly through big fights. And it felt like there were more of those double counters where you take out two goons at once. I'm still wowed by how reactive those animations are, and I really like that you have so many gadgets to start with. You can go from Arkham Asylum to City to Origins without feeling like you've taken a step backwards, because it's the same gadget, just earlier tech. Yes, this Batman is very much a work in progress, both psychologically, but also in his suit construction and the Batcave. I think most of all, they've really stepped up the combat this time around. There are just so many fights. And they were much more challenging this time around, with more aggressive goons and combat variables for you to worry about on the fly. And many of them are still thinking about hours later. I still struggle with the controls on a few occasions in some of those fights though, Bajo. Yeah, me too. Especially with those quick fire gadgets. <laughs> But I do think they teach you to be a better Batman in combat. Yeah, and I think they do a better job of letting you know what's going on within a fight around you, such as the click of a gun, knowing that you need to take that out quickly, or the red counter indicator that you can't avoid. I also found myself quick firing batarangs a lot more in combat now, which is the way it should be. That sticky concussion grenade was a favourite of mine for delayed incapacitation of enemies in a fight. But nothing can match the carnage of the shock gloves. Tell they thought hard about enemy combinations too. It's not just room after room of more goons. There are times when you'll wonder, how will I ever get through this? You're a dead man. It's balanced combat. You feel awesome as Batman, but never overpowered. Mm. The boss fights were a bit of a mixed bag, though. Bane's stuff was incredible. But then others, like the one with Firefly, didn't really play to the strengths of the game, I thought. There's more of a focus on detective work, too. This bullet was fired from a revolver. Ballistics analysis indicates a low angle of trajectory. The shooter could have been someone of Penguin's height. You'll reconstruct a scene and try to figure out what's happened. It only occurs a handful of times in the main story. But it's a fun storytelling mechanic, and I hope future games explore this detective side of Bats a little bit more. Yeah, me too. It must be hard to balance action with puzzles and things like that in a game like this. But it's a good mix. There were a few confusing level design issues though, and I did get a bit sick of going into Detective Vision so much, and I think maybe slightly more obvious level design cues might be a better way for the series to go. But I like that you're not always presented with the answer, and you do have to look around a bit. I thought the shadowing and colour palette was really interesting. Yeah, I think the dark parts were even darker than Arkham City, if that's even possible. But it means you notice it more when they work colour in there, which is nice. I think what I like most about this game, though, is how everyone underestimates each other. Some fear Batman, some haven't heard of him. What are you? Some know him well. You're saying you're Batman. And Bats underestimates who he's going up against constantly. What did you do to me? You know, and it's just fun watching all that play out. <laughs> For me, this was all about the Joker. There are some truly incredible moments with him as a young, fresh, and completely insane villain. And Origins has some of the best cutscenes I've seen in a long time. <laughs> also new to the franchise is multiplayer. It's Joker's gang versus Bane's gang versus the dynamic duo Batman and Robin. A 3 versus 3 versus 2 matchup brought to us by developer Splash Damage, who are known for the Enemy Territory series. It's a dark game mode, but it needs to be because when you're playing as Batman or Robin, you need to rely on the shadows to survive and pick your targets carefully. <laughs> yeah, you can always tell a newcomer Batman or Robin because they just walk into a fight. Robin, safe. It's quite terrifying though, seeing Batman creeping about and hearing the flap of the cape. Yeah, I've never quite felt the fear of being a goon before quite like this. There's unlocks and gadgets and many takedown strategies to play with on all sides. I liked it, Hex. It's not something I'll come back to a lot, but at least it's not tacked on. It feels balanced and thought out. All in all, Origins does play it pretty safe on the single player side of things, but there's no serious exhaustion here, and I think they've done a fantastic job of dealing with the important Batman subject matter. You know, it's great to be back doing that signature Batman strut, so I'm giving it 8.5 out of 10. I think for me, I, I finally enjoy this combat fully. I've always been a little bit on the fence with something so counter heavy. <laughs> I just wish there were more superhero games with this level of polish and commitment, and I'm so happy that this isn't a stopgap or a filler game. It's a Batman chapter in its own right. I'm giving it 9.5 out of 10 rubber chickens. Good game. Thanks, Goose. 
Gotham is under siege and it's up to Batman to even the odds. He's in for a very long night. What can you see? A city engulfed in fear. Betrayed by those who trust the most. Your darkest secrets revealed. As I tear your mind apart. And the whole world will see the fear in your eyes. Then they too will understand. There is no savior. No more hope. No more. Batman Arkham Knight is the fourth recent Batman game and the third one from the series creator Rocksteady Studios. And it is near impossible to review this game without spoilers, but we swear we will do everything in our power to do just that. So I promise on my heart, on our parents' graves, that this will be a spoiler-free review. Yes, well, we're huge Batman fans, so it is our duty to do so, as it is Batman's duty to punch the face of goons. <laughs> So yes, no spoilers, but we are going to assume you finished Rocksteady's last game, Arkham City. Yes, and if you haven't, firstly, why not? And secondly, it's your own fault, which is why I'm going to say the ending of that game right now, because the Joker died, he's dead. And you're reminded of that fact pretty quickly. But villains are plentiful in Gotham. Scarecrow is up to his old tricks, preparing something called the Cloud Burst with a highly concentrated fear toxin. Gotham, this is your only warning. He plans to infect the entire city, which is quickly evacuated. Except for dumb goons, of course, who just hoon around the streets, getting in Batman's way. <laughs> this chaos also opens the door for other major Batman villains to pop into town and start causing trouble. The other major player is a mysterious villain known as the Arkham Knight. He has a sizable military force of drones and soldiers which pose new tactical problems for Batman and for you to explore. The identity of the Arkham Knight is unknown. The only thing you do know is that he's got a connection to Batman and likes a bit of bat cosplay. He's a bit of a bat fan. But the mystery of who the Arkham Knight is is a huge hook into your spine and it pulls you right into the game and drives you to the very end. Yes, but the main reason why this game is so different to the others is that it's not just another Batman beats up the bad guy game. It really is an emotional, introspective journey for Bats, delving deep into what he represents to the world around him Thank you. and what consequences his past actions have had on those he cares about. This? It's wrong. We have to make sacrifices, Alfred. Consider those sacrifices wisely, sir. And along the way, Bats is going to have to confront some personal demons, but it's the way they tell the story, Bajo. It's magnificent, and we can't tell you about it. Yeah, it's truly remarkable. And how the mechanics are just woven into the storytelling, it's always unique, always affecting, and it constantly surprises you. And it never loses momentum. That's the biggest thing for me. It starts here and it just goes up and up and up until you're in this heightened state of Batman lore subject matter <laughs> euphoria. I don't think I've played a game that has told a story like this. And I don't think a story like this can be told in other mediums. It takes games to get this right. And there's such respect for the characters and the lore as there were in the previous games. <laughs> But even more now, you get a sense of this universe and its rogues gallery of villains. You're always in the moment with Batman, feeling like Batman, walking like Batman. I soaked up every cutscene, and they didn't even feel like cutscenes. It was just like I was Batman just being Batman, and the performances are stellar. Yeah, especially Poison Ivy, Jim Gordon, and Scarecrow, who each steal the show at certain points in the game. Do you really think you've won? Fear makes you predictable. Arkham Knight also shows us just how tough Batman can be. I guess Scarecrow gave you the slip. You... Oh. He is the epitome of one who does not muck about. Even the way he opens panels is serious business. <laughs> just use the handle. Yeah. Go to hell. Oh. You're launched into the game world within minutes. Perched upon a rooftop, looking over the city, which is your city, you own it and it needs to be cleansed. And the map is huge. It's a true realisation of Gotham, with no walls stopping bats, no barriers, no boundaries, no out-of-mission zones. 
You just need to glide in and take the city back. Yes, and this time to help, you've got this guy. Oh, the Batmobile. It's the biggest change to the series, and it kind of turns the game into a co-op game. It's like Batman and his car taking on the bads. That takes care of the vehicle. I need to interrogate the driver and find out what he knows. And wherever I was, I knew the Batmobile was always somewhere close. It's like a bat safety blanket. Plus, it's got those two creepy compartments in its butt for carrying passengers. So weird. <laughs> Just get in. You're not looking at where you're going. It would be terrifying. <laughs> you get so sick in there, it'd be vomit everywhere. <laughs> Especially jokes. with my driving. <laughs> the car design is reminiscent of the Nolan movie's Tumblr. But it's not just a big, tough car. It's also got a powerful winch for puzzle solving and ramp creating. And it's also a tank. Nick, it always irks me when Batman has a weapon which is like a gun in any way, whether it's on a car or not. And I don't know, it is addressed in the game a little bit. Maybe I'm just being too sensitive. Yeah, I guess technically he never kills anyone with his enormous killer gun. Guys, I almost hit Batman. It's always suppression rounds for people and tank shells for the knight's forces who conveniently are robotic drones. At first, Bajo, I thought, robot tanks? This kind of seems like a lame solution to the Batman doesn't kill anyone idea, but it actually worked kind of well. I was impressed. I did struggle a bit with the driving though, and I did find some of those Riddler challenge races a little bit tedious. Did you really believe that a challenge designed by me, the Riddler, would be quite so easy? I didn't mind the Riddler stuff, but I totally agree about the driving. I found that once I stopped driving it like it was a car and started driving it like it was Miley Cyrus's wrecking ball, then that really helped. Taking fire! In battle mode, though, maneuvering is intuitive and fighting as a tank works well. And that's strafe. Yeah, once you realise, though, that walls aren't really a problem for the Batmobile, it's suddenly a lot more fun just crashing through the city with reckless abandon. Batman is the worst thing that happened to Gotham. Yeah. It was like that when I got here. And the Batmobile isn't an I-win mechanic either. Can take out goons in one hit, but most fist fights are on rooftops or indoors, so there still is plenty of biffo. But it is really impressive how the Batmobile is woven into the gameplay. Yeah, I was surprised at how much I enjoyed all those tandem moments where I'm using the Batmobile to take out some goons while Batman's trapped somewhere. Really, the Batmobile is just another one of Batman's gadgets. It's his mobile iron fist on wheels. And what about how beautiful the car is, and the suit, and the city design, and then the everything else in this game? Yeah, we reviewed this on PS4 and it does look fantastic. It's so smooth. And it's the first time that I felt like I've been in a living, breathing Gotham City. Buildings aren't just big squares with a texture on top. There's detail and depth to them. Recognisable districts. A real sense of space, especially as you glide about. It's such a joy navigating about this world. Yeah, and even though it's still missing the citizens on the streets like with the other games, it's still a city that feels alive. And when you transition from one location to the next, either inside buildings or just over the fence into a mission area, it's just so seamless. Yeah, that really is the word for this game. It's GTA V tier at times. Yeah, and it seems like every hour a new side mission pops up, and they're all different, they're all true to lore and interesting to pursue. Bring me Bruce Wayne. Way too many side missions to mention, but they are just so rewarding. Nick, I never need to 100% a game, but I need to 100% this game. <laughs> yeah, I'm there with you. I need to do it. I need all the Riddler trophies. I need all of them. And it's a nice way to break up the punchies. And Batman has some new tricks, but so do the enemies. And the hallmark of the series, the counter base combat, is back and <clears throat> it's perfect. And now there's more of a focus on using environmental objects, which feels awesome during a fight. And you're always looking for them and grabbing enemies' weapons, which also hit really hard, but they take precious time to pick up, leaving you open to attacks. And if you've racked up a silent takedown, then you can do the new multi-fear takedown, which is delicious. Because you two aren't paying attention. <laughs> The fear takedown is really the cherry on top of this combat. It's just so good. And it's very Batman, too, the way he can scare people long enough to take out a few enemies. Yeah, totally. And also, everything, all the gadgets from the other games, are unlocked right at the beginning. So it's more a matter of just upgrading your skills and getting these new takedowns. Mm -hmm. You do get to do a bit of new hacking, though, with flying drones and voice synthesizer technology, which mixes things up a bit. Open the gate! 
I don't get it. What's there to get? Just get the gate open. Okay. But it is more the change in enemies that keeps these fights interesting. Back, you're here. Oh. But, uh, oh, you're always getting charged. No, oh, the charges are so stressful. They, they got me every time. But I do love how the combat forces you to kind of go, okay, I need to isolate this guy so I can now reprioritize who's getting my fists. Yeah, especially when you've got those goons that revive fallen enemies. So annoying. I both love them and hate them at the same time. I mainly hate them. And the big tough guys are even bigger and tougher. You also have fights where Catwoman, Nightwing and Robin can step in to help. During these sequences, it's mostly just about switching characters for fun and using dual takedowns to mix things up. But they also provide fuel for the developing plot lines between the characters. Robin's sections are particularly good, and I love that there's so much detective work to do now. It's so good. Some of my favourite sections were where you're just scrubbing through surveillance footage and zooming in and analysing what you see with science. And while there are a bunch of minigames throughout the game, it's got that perfect balance of difficulty with controls while cutting the fat and not being too repetitive. Yeah, the devs don't patronise the players. Yeah, and it's not just the Riddler stuff. It's all the puzzles in the game. They're nice and tough. It means you have to work for it and the gameplay is better for it. Uh, I can't take it anymore, Bajo. We need to talk about, in specific detail, the unique storytelling elements that make this game so good. No, Nick, we mustn't. But it is the whole point as to why this game is great. I will not go on until I speak about it on national television. You're going to sit here and break a promise you just made to our viewers. <sighs> Fine. Okay, well, how about this? We mute all this in post so that they don't know what we're saying, but we get it out of our system. It sounds like a good compromise. Yeah, yeah except for the lip readers, so we're going to be able to work it out. You can't please everyone. <laughs> all right, mute on. And then it just gets better and better. Do you feel any better? No. No, me neither. <laughs> there is just so much to talk about with this game and we do not have time. But what a game. This game, budget. The things you do as Batman and the things you're forced to do is just so creative and thought-provoking. You don't have to do this on your own, Bruce. I can help you. And what an ending. The imagery, the conceptualization of it. Nick, when I finished this game, I put the controller down, put my head in my hands, and a small tear rolled down my face. Oh, no. Yeah, because of pure joy. Oh, well, look, I can definitely see some giant Game of the Year arguments between this game and The Witcher, and probably Fallout 4 and whatever else is great. But, Bajo, this is just one of the most evolved games I've ever played. It's come so far from Arkham Asylum, which was already great. It's outstanding work by Rocksteady Studios. You can tell they've put everything they have into this game. Bajo, I know I'm just filling in for Hex, but I gotta give this game five out of five stars. It absolutely deserves it, Nick. I'm giving it five out of five stars as well. And of course, that means the Golden Rubber Chicken Award. You die here, and your legend dies with you. You know, we always do something a bit special for Double Fives, and as you're the guest this week, why don't you decide? <gasps> Nudie lap around the ABC. Nobody wants to see that. Stop suggesting it. <laughs> Why don't we just dress up as Batman and Robin and do a bit of a run around the ABC? I love it! Let's go! I'm Batman! No! Oh, no, come on! Not. We talked about this. Yes, we did, and I'm Batman! That's not how Batman remembers it. Are those my underpants? Okay, look, let's not fight. Okay, yes, let's just be awesome. Yes. Yes. I, mean, I, I like to get a, a soy cap. I'm not allergic to dairy milk, yeah. but I just I just like to be different. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I order things with gluten in them. Yeah. Because I, I'm allergic to things that don't have gluten. Right. That's interesting. Hold on. <sighs> oh, it's a bit cold. Oh, let's go back inside. Yes. Did you bring your pass? Oh no. Uh, Alfred! Alfred! Bring me my pants! And the soy cap! Alfred! Coming up.
up next? Hang on a sec, Hex. I have to go. Justice calls. What? It's justice. We've soared through Gotham many times as the Batman, but now we get to choose just what kind of man we want Bruce Wayne to be. Batman the Telltale series is a big deal for developer Telltale Games. They've done so much with the point-and-click adventure genre over the years, but Batman is different. He's revered and well understood. They have to get this right. I promise, as a Batman fan, I will not reveal any major spoilers. Don't you dare talk about my father. However, this first episode, Realm of Shadows, is only a couple of hours long, so watching this review might impact your experience a little. The game begins by throwing you into Batman action. Faction. Bat sorts out a robbery in progress, deals out some hurt, and generally looks a bit cool. This setup works so well because it instantly gives you an idea of where you are in the Batman timeline. The cops don't trust him yet, and Cats and Bat's long relationship is only beginning. The way you interact with the non-dialogue sequences has evolved over the years with Telltale Games, and I think this might be the best yet. The animations are smooth, the quick-time events are varied and dynamic, and there's a real sense of urgency to the combat. The only thing that shows how creaky this engine is in 2016 now is when they're just walking about normally. There's a slight awkwardness to it, almost like they've got batarangs stuck up their butts. Maybe they do. I would also suggest playing this with a controller, as some of the QuickTime keyboard combinations didn't feel very intuitive. Shift Q? Really? That's right next to Shift Tab. But oh, the cinematography! My little bat heart was exploding with joy. All of the scenes and framing in this game are deliberate and crafted with real care. There's so many emotive moments and hero shots. You can tell they've had a blast putting this together, and they have paid due respect to the comics, movies, and cartoons. But at the same time, they've also got their own take on things. Visually, Gotham looks great, Batman's suit looks awesome, and Bruce is broodingly handsome. You going to play nice this time? Well, that depends on you. And the car! I love the look of this Batmobile. Oh, that's the stuff. Telltale games are all about the decisions that you make and how they impact the overall story in future episodes. Oh, it's cold. It's vichyssois, sir. It's meant to be cold. You don't have to be a dick about it. And in this game, you play as Bruce Wayne a fair bit. Well, Hill has a history of making his opposition disappear. <sighs> And what excites me so much about this game is that you get to be Bruce, which is so rare, let alone make decisions for him. And you quickly get the impression that your choices matter a lot here. Shaking someone's hand, going on or off the record, it all adds up. Turn it off, Miss Vale. Except this time, it's not just people like Vicky Vale or Commissioner Gordon that will remember this. It's Gotham. Gotham will remember this. This Batman is still trying to figure out who he is and what he stands for and how far he will go. And what's so brilliant is that you get to make those choices. These are pivotal moments for Batman as a character and we get to define them. Do you break someone's arm or just scare them? Do you distance yourself from the police or the media? What kind of Bruce will you be? The charming Michael Keaton? The Batman that fights to save every life, even the criminals? Or maybe the violent, grumpy, fed up Batman who does not muck about? I'm Batman. I never realised how much I wanted this kind of Batman game until I sat down and started to play it. However, I did come across a few bugs on the PC version that marred the experience just a little. Every now and then some sound effects wouldn't play, or I'd just get stuck in a menu. Not a big deal, but they are there. Also, the detectiving that Batman does is a little simple and fiddly. I still enjoyed it though. I always enjoy using science. Cop shredded this murk to pieces, barehanded. Troy Baker is the voice for Bats, and normally his work is spot on, but I'm still warming to him in this case. Who put you up to this? Answer me or I let go. But what really matters is that I think they've nailed the characterizations for Batman and all the other characters. The writing is so good. Okay, imagine this is me, and these are all my friends in Gotham. 
The businesses, restaurants, clubs, docks, unions, politicians. I make them all move. And there's a great momentum to the flow of the conversations too. At E3 this year, I spoke to Job Staffer, Head of Creative Communications for Telltale, and he talked about the writing process for their games. Where do you even begin? Like, how did you pick what you wanted to do? So working with DC and Warner, you know, 75 years of comics and, and, and looking at all the different actors and writers and directors, film, all the different storytellers that have done their takes on comics as well. We, we can kind of look to that as influence. We broke in a writer's room. We got, you know, uh, our, our most passionate writers and designers and Batman fans at Telltale to sit down with DC and Warner, um, even some, some outside fans as well to sort of sit down and say, okay, well, what is the ultimate Batman Telltale story? And we, everything starts in the writer's room with Telltale and we don't, we don't make a single frame of artwork until we know we're going to be starting with a great story. There's so many great scenes and little moments in this episode that I will not spoil for you, but by the end you are totally invested. And there is a lot of setup. Batman has a massive public image problem, a mystery to solve. Can't make sense of it yet. And some more heads to bust. This is such a promising start to what could be a landmark game for The Dark Knight. I'm giving it four stars. Oh, do not tombstones be your family legacy. Well then. Time to save the scene.